With the rise and popularity of ChatGPT, there's been a lot of specific use cases that have emerged where a ChatGPT-like application would be very useful. Until recently, businesses and individuals were not able to build their own ChatGPT-like AI applications. But a couple of days ago, OpenAI released the ChatGPT API, which allows developers and businesses to be able to build their own specific ChatGPT AI bot for specific use cases. So in today's video, I'll be going over how you can access the new ChatGPT Turbo API, and I'll also be showing you how you can access the ChatGPT Turbo Playground, which allows you to play around with this new API. So you're actually able to test out some specific inputs, you can test out some settings, and you can really prompt the system in a way that works well for a specific chat box application. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you'd like to access the ChatGPT Turbo API, just head over to platform.openai.com and then you wanna head over to the playground mode. If you've used the GPT-3 playground mode before, it's very similar. Essentially, this is the back end of the API, which allows you to do more customization compared to the front end, which would be the chat GPT website. If you go on the chat GPT website, um, you really don't have much settings. You just go ahead and enter an input and you will get an output just depending on the type of input that you entered. But on the playground mode, you have a little bit more customization options. If you would like to access the new ChatGPT Turbo API, just head over to the chat mode. And as you can see here, you'll be able to see the model. So we'll be using the GPT 3.5 Turbo mode. You have two different models there, but just go ahead and use the regular Turbo mode. And you have some settings at the bottom here. Now, if you watch my previous video, when I went over um, GPT-3 Playground, as you can see, you have some specific settings here. So you have the temperature. This allows you to tell the AI how creative you want the outputs to be. Lower the temperature, the less creative the AI outputs would be. Higher the temperature, the more creative your AI um, outputs will be. You also have your maximum length, so you can go ahead and change this length if you're generating longer pieces of content. You have your top P, your frequency penalty, and your presence penalty. Essentially, your frequency penalty, if you increase this, then it will reduce the amount of repetitive words that's included within the chat box outputs. If you increase your presence penalty, then it will increase the likelihood that the AI will talk about more novel topics or ideas um, when you're getting outputs. I usually recommend leaving the top P to the one setting. And if you want to, we can increase the frequency penalty by a little bit just to make sure that you're not getting um, repetitive content. Now, when it comes to temperature, you can actually play around with this. It just depends on the specific type of chat box in which you're creating. If you're creating an assistant, um, a general assistant, then you may wanna increase the temperature settings because then um, you'll get more creative and more human-like content. But if you're creating a chat box that's only informational, then you may want it to reduce the temperature Temperature because then you'll get less creative inputs and you'll get much more objective outputs rather than more subjective outputs. So that's a little bit of a tip. Um, but again, this is a work in progress and I would definitely recommend playing around with it just depending on your specific use case. So when it's time for you to actually go ahead and play with this new GPT 3.5 Turbo mode, there's a couple of different settings here. The first setting is gonna be the system. So this is where you'll be able to tell the chat box what type of specific application this chat box will be used for. So for this example, I input it that you are a helpful university tutor specializing in political science. Your objective is to be as helpful and as in-depth as possible when answering questions. As you can see, the chat mode is a little bit different from the completion mode or the GPT-3 playground mode, which um, just allows you to get more text completion. This is more of a conversational style chat box. So you wanna start by entering a user message. So this would be an input in which a user would have for this specific chat box. So ideally, the user would enter an input that is specific for this type of system, which is a tutor specializing in political science. So a question could be, how would you describe democracy in Canada? Let's go ahead and submit that. And as you can see, we'd be able to see what we get back from the assistant. So for this input, how would you describe democracy in Canada? This is what we get back from the assistant. So it talks very in-depthly about democracy in Canada, um, what it is, the Canadian system of democracy, what it's based on, what it also includes, and just uh, an overall summary of the Canadian democracy. So I think it was a lot more in-depth um, than other um, outputs because we told it to be as helpful and as in-depth as possible. So let's go ahead and actually change this 
um, prompt to see if it makes a little bit of a difference. For the second input, I asked it to describe what free healthcare in Canada is. And as you can see here, we got a nice description as well. So it doesn't really seem as though we're able to get a difference in terms of the length when we change the prompt. Maybe we would have to change the max length on the left hand side here if we just want to get more shorter pieces of content from the AI. So let's go ahead and change it again on the left hand side here and we'll ask it a new prompt to see if it makes a difference. So for this last input, we did get something a little bit shorter. So if you went ahead and played around with the max length, that would reduce or increase the length in which you're getting back from the AI. And again, if you would like to change the type of system or the type of use case for that chat box, you can change it within the system. And this is going to be sort of like prompt engineering on the AI because you'll really be trying to prime the AI and be able to really describe what the system is or what the specific use case is so that you can get the best quality outputs when using that specific chat box. Another example of a system could be you have been a basketball coach for 50 years and you specialize in helping people become pro basketball players. Your task is to answer every question using your experience and to be as helpful and offer actionable advice to improve um, the user's basketball skills. So that would be the specific system. So let's go ahead and add a new message here, which would be how to improve my three point shooting. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this new um, input and let's see the output in which we're able to get back. Okay, so here we go. We got some output about how to increase your three point shooting abilities in basketball. So it talks about working on your footwork, focus on your release, practice shooting from different spots, get plenty of reps, get feedback, and remember your three point shooting takes time and effort. Okay, so as you can see here, you can really prime the AI in the um, direction in which you would like it to be in, um, specific for the use case in which you're trying to build a chat box for. So very exciting stuff where if you have any specific use cases, you can test it out first on the playground mode, which is why I think it's very important. You can really test out what works well in terms of the inputs for the system and also some of the um, parameters on the right hand side, which would be temperature, max length, the frequency penalty and the presence penalty. So let's go ahead and try another input here, which is how do I improve my free throws if I am left handed? Okay, practice, focus on your mechanics, use visualization, get feedback, practice shooting from different spots. As the case with most of open AI tools, they make it very user friendly and very easy to use so that anyone can have access to these very powerful large language models. So if you wanted to go ahead and play around with this playground mode, again, just head over to platform.openai.com slash playground. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. If you want to go ahead and create an account, you do need to put a card on your account because every time you submit content on the playground mode, it is being charged because you are using OpenAI's API. So if you want to go ahead and play around with this, I'll leave a link in the description below this video. I hope you found this information useful and I hope that you can go ahead and start playing around with the playground mode and find some specific use cases that you can build your own chat GPT chat box with. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.